All right, what's happening, my friends? I am joined by our Warrior Poet Training Director, Paul Perkerson, and we are doing some range drills today. Also wanted you to know- you. It's true. And Sweet. Evan is- Hold on, hold on. How's it going? What is that? So I don't know um, what they call it. I just know the sound it makes. Paul, you see anything wrong with this gun? I see everything wrong with this. I don't know what you're talking about. Switched out the trigger for a, for a Norris. I've got a Seagal upper. I see. LPVZ. I see. A J11B. That's um, not a thing. The mount is on completely back. Can I borrow a mag? I was, uh... Oh, there's one. Grab that. Pull. There you go. See? Are you ready? Ah! You guys ready for this? Ah! What's happening, guys? My name's John, and I think woke entertainment sucks. I want some just good old-fashioned values in my entertainment. God, family, country, fist pump, freedom loving stuff, that's what I miss in entertainment. The big guys like Netflix and Amazon and Hollywood, they hate your values, they hate my values. So I'm asking you guys to check out WPSN. Watch WPSN.com. That's the Warrior Poet Society Network. That's our thing. And we've got two binge worthy shows without all the woke nonsense. Right in the. Oh, you got both seats. You don't feel like belly laugh, fun, or intense drama shows, you can pivot over and check out our full tactical training classes. Because what dude in America doesn't want to learn how to defend themselves with their hands or blades? Being able to take long range precision shots to end something from a different zip code, I think that's pretty darn cool and so do you. For 10 bucks a month, you can join WPSN, WPSN.com. And that's it, I'm out, I'm out. Do the thing, do the right thing. All right, guys, so this will be kind of a fun video. We've got this amalgamation of things that look completely unbelievable to you, the viewer, right? However, John and I, between the two of us, have probably seen almost all of these things. Absolutely. This is the stew pot <laughs> of crazy that happens with rifles. Listen, and it's okay. Listen, we're not trying to shame anybody because you don't know what you don't know, right? When people come to rifle class, they come to rifle one, you don't always know these things. Right. right, and if we are shaming a little bit, be shamed <laughs> privately while you watch a video rather than in front of all your buddies at the range. So uh, let's just kind of take this apart one by one. I'm gonna go right for the big one. This is my favorite, Bro. the horizontal foregrip. <laughs> <laughs> there's no such thing as a horizontal foregrip. I've seen multiple rifles where there's a right. big handle there. Yep. One person I met did have a medical reason why they did it. I'm kind of like, sure. oh, well, Makes party sense. on it. If we were gonna take the horizontal foregrip and turn into a vertical <laughs> foregrip, all right? Uh, you wanna place it so that wherever your hand falls for your uh, for that good support hand position that you want, you wanna be sure that you're contacting kind of uh, lower three fingers, you're still able to shoot good thumb over bore for recoil management stuff. Really hard to do with this stupid light mount of the way this, but uh, there is a proper way if you're gonna utilize a vertical foregrip, uh, hand stop, something like that, there's a proper placement for it and there's a way to figure it out to make it work for you. I don't personally run them myself, but if you're gonna do it, do it the correct way, use it so that it's actually beneficial and not a detriment and most importantly, looks dumb. All right, I'll take got? one. Sure. The sights are backwards. Look, the rear sight and the front sight are both mounted backwards. And let me see something. Yeah, and this fixed front sight is right in the way. All in your field of view sure. too. So improper mounting of the backup iron sights. Here you uh, go. All right, so um, listen, another big one I'm sure you guys can see. So a couple of things with the positioning of the light, <laughs> right? One, uh, just for ergonomics and the way that most people grip the modern battle rifle, kind of what's generally accepted practice, this is gonna be too close to the receiver, right? This is too close to the ejection port here to allow you to uh, have the correct grip, right? Also, as you already alluded to, there's this thing that's in the way of other things back here, not just just our optic, but the light as well. You don't want anything to rob the powerful throw of your light, and you don't right. want anything reflecting light back to blind you. That is utterly trash placement of a light. All right, what am I gonna go with? There's so much. Uh, so I'll go with this. One is I immediately touch the optic and it wiggles, meaning this is not properly tightened down. This is a ADM mount. It's a very good mount, but this mount needs to be turned around the other way. You also want to be able to mount it on the receiver and not partial handguard. So you want all of it on the receiver. You don't want to share between handguard and receiver. It doesn't look like this is centered well in between either. I guarantee you it has not been leveled properly with something like a leveling tool. On these quick detach 
mounts, the QD mounts, there's a little flathead screwdriver thing. What you'll do is you'll pop one of these open like that, and then you'll screw these down a little bit tighter until you can just barely close that. If it closes that easy, it's too loose. And then the litmus test, you'll try to wiggle, and if it wiggles, you've done a bad job. If you really wanna get into the weeds of how to properly mount optics, really do it right, on our streaming service, we have a Ryan Kleckner long range shooting course, a first and second volume, and he really goes through how to do all this stuff. I think it's the best around. Watch WPSN.com. What's your next one? All right, so maybe we can talk about the sling setup here. Some of this that I'm gonna talk about, some of you may fall into that 25%, what I call art form when it comes to shooting, right? 75% science, hard, fast, non-negotiable. And there's that 25%, hey, figure out how you interface with the weapon platform and uh, make your gear work for you. So I will say though that probably mounting underneath the rifle up here, this is just not really accepted practice, right? The sling is designed to run a certain way, certain direction, keep your straps running the right way. So I think the correct position is gonna be assuming a right-handed shooter on the left side here, right? So that the gun lays flat across, it doesn't barn door over with the optics sticking up and your mag rotating into your stomach. So you gotta mount it on the side. And coming back here, uh, now my preference, and I think yours is too, and just about everybody I know that's in the business, we mount our, uh, the, rear, the rear attachment point is gonna come over and it's gonna be on the firing side. So right-handed shooter is gonna come over the buttstock and we're actually gonna have it this way, wrapped over the top and connected on the other side here. And right? why is that? Because that keeps this out of your way when you're shouldering the rifle. Right. This thing ends up just getting caught on your presentation and get hung up in kit, things like that, so. I've also noticed that when the sling is on the outside here, it keeps the buttstock pinned tighter. against tighter sure. so that your muzzle stays farther away. When your gun is able to swing out this way, then a hot muzzle, presumably because you've been shooting a lot and you got a silencer on there that's a few hundred degrees, pushes against your pants, you'll say, ow, I wish that had not burned <laughs> my thighs with third degree hate. So uh, listen, <laughs> uh, again, you know, maybe Evan's ready to shoot, maybe he's not, but- he's not. Uh, He's not. But um, buttstock placement, right? We have uh, we have buttstocks that uh, change positions for a reason, right? It's, you know, not everybody's the same height, doesn't have the same, something we talk about in rifle one, length of pull, right? So um, adjusting your buttstock, making sure that it fits your body. That's why we have adjustable buttstocks these days. Uh, that's why the seats adjust in your car. Not everybody's pedals are gonna reach from the same spot. So that's, right. that's why we got them. I'd also say in establishing your length of pull, that's so that you're not all like crushed up on the gun like this. You wanna be able to have room for a starting point, hold your arm at a right angle with the ground. And then I like to put two fingers in between the buttstock and my arm right there. And uh, when everything between touches- Between the buttstock and his bicep. That's it. I'm the crook of my arm there. My bicep starts a little farther up the arm, okay. but there you go. Length of pull needs to be established. Next thing that I see here, this charging handle. This has got a pretty aggressive amount of surface area yeah. sticking out here, which if you are running a defensive rifle, a tactical rifle with kits, you've got stuff and you don't want this hanging on your stuff, taking your gun out of battery when you want it to be in battery, right? So this, to me, this is a little too much uh, surface area on this. I think maybe this is uh, better, um, better predisposed to maybe competitive shooting, right? Some of these larger, more aggressive right. surface area for like three gunners. Uh, maybe this is something that works well in that arena, but not necessarily as a defensive shooter, right? Right. Um, and just because it's something that you can get on your rifle in Call of Duty doesn't mean it's something that you really should have in real life, okay? That's good. Uh, there are better options. Of the, like, I like the Radian charging yep, handles, and there's too. some other variations out there, yep. and they come out, they're just not that aggressive. Absolutely. And that just, that one's, I can tell it's really gonna catch on stuff. Sure. And look, that, that's just, man, that's you're, a lot. you're gonna struggle with that. I ditch that. Maybe if you're an Arctic warrior and you wear mittens when you fight. So. You little mitten thumb. <laughs> Very last consideration is probably the most important to cover. Uh, this is a 300 blackout gun. And Evan just took a uh, magazine of 5.56 ammo, didn't know the gun that he had, went ahead and loaded it in and wanted to shoot it. And that's what we call a no-no. You got anything else? Yeah, that's it. I think we've. Uh, I think all we need to do now is really uh, get some tools and start working on this thing and fix it for our boy here. And <laughs> yeah, that's and Evan that's one way of doing it. Evan just grabbed far superior guns. Now we have to fix our gun and 
find Evan. Guys, friends don't let friends have dorky rifle setups. You know, do the right thing. This is a public service announcement. Watch Warrior Poet Society videos and all your problems in life will be solved. Or at least your rifle problems. Some of your rifle problems will be solved. This is going downhill quickly. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please visit warriorpoetsociety.com. We've got our streaming service and app, our training classes, our shows. Come train with Paul or Josh. Check out our merch, all ways to support the channel. Appreciate you guys. Train hard, train smart, stay free.